excited about this next guest because he's going to be talking a lot about some personal experiences in which he, um, you know, rises. So please join me in welcoming Ty Nichols. I remember when I was 12 years old and I moved to a new neighborhood and everyone in this new neighborhood had a bike. And I never owned a bike, but I always wanted to learn how to ride one. But none of the people in this new neighborhood would teach me. So I had to teach myself. And let me tell you, it was a challenge. I was literally falling all over the place. I was running into curbs, parked cars, you name it. Some of my friends, even from back then, still laugh at me to this day. You see, I was desperate to succeed. Success. Success is simply achieving the goals that you set for yourself but I think failure is more important. So what is failure? Well, first let me tell you what failure is not. Failure is not fatal. Failure is not final. Failure is your teacher. Failure is but a stepping stone to greatness. Let me show you. By a show of hands, how many of you know how to ride a bike? Now keep your hands raised if you never fell off that bike learning to ride. You see there? In that instance, when you fell, you experienced failure. And you learn from that, just like I did, what to do and what not to do. You see, failure was my teacher, and it taught me well. That concrete was pretty tough. Over time, I had to discipline myself, placing one foot on the ground, checking the seat, keeping both hands on the handlebars. And after a while, I was hopping curbs, doing tricks, and popping wheelies. You see, you must learn self-discipline, or something or someone will discipline you. This applies to anything that you want to achieve in life. Bill Gates, Beyonce, Michael Phelps, Jeff Bezos. These names all have a common theme, winners. These are some of the most successful people in the world with regard to their particular craft. If you want to win, let me hear you say, yeah! The way to win in this world is through self-discipline. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What is it? Why do you need it? How to develop it and keys to stay on track. So what is self-discipline? According to Webster's Dictionary, it is the regulation of oneself for the sake of improvement. Other definitions include Perseverance, restraint, finishing what you start regardless of obstacles or hurdles. You see, self-discipline is about changing your behavior, creating actions and habits that are congruent with your goals. Actions and habits that are congruent with your goals. Why do you need it? Every single person that's ever accomplished anything that's been exemplary, extraordinary, has faced difficulty. And self-discipline is the key to bringing out your inner strength. 
And that inner strength drives you to overcome the difficulties in your path. There is no easy road. It does not exist. Self-discipline will help you get beyond that. How do we develop it? Well, first, let's talk about the brain. Our brains are habit-making machines. You see, habits are shortcuts that allow us to do things without using so much mental effort. According to researchers, 40% of human behavior is habit. That's literally hundreds of things that you do all day long that you don't even think about. Whether you're drying your hair when you get out of the shower, or you're locking your door before you leave your home, whether you're just opening up your, unlocking your smartphone. The key is to develop particular habits that are congruent with your goals and your purpose. Self-discipline is also like a muscle. The more you develop it, the stronger it gets. Our, oftentimes, we make a decision and we end up falling short and then we give up. The key to developing self-discipline is being consistent. Taking small actions and being consistent. I remember I made a decision some time ago. I woke up one morning after a uh, taco extravaganza and I said, you know what, forget about it. I've gotta lose, I've gotta lose this weight, I feel terrible. I've got to do something different. If I want something I've never had, I've got to do something that I've never done. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the gym 100 days in a row. And to hold myself accountable, I'm going to post it on social media every single day. And to this day, that stuff is still there. The 100 days in running, you can check on Instagram, you can check my Facebook every single day. There was a struggle. But one day turned to three, three turned to five, 10 turned to 30, 50 to 70. And on day 73, I had a major setback. You see, it was a long day at work and I came home and my wife felt sorry for me. She said, oh, it looks like you're having a bad day. I tell you what, I'm gonna make your favorite meal, stuffed chicken. I said, yes! I start doing a dance. I was ready. She said, go ahead and do your thing. I know you're going to go to the gym. By the time you come back from the gym, everything will be ready. I don't think I ever got dressed so fast. I got in my gym clothes, ran down to the gym, and I jumped straight into the weight pit. I grabbed my 80-pound dumbbells, I hopped on the bench, and I was just rapping. Boom, boom, boom. Now, when you're on a bench, there's three ways that you can put weights down. One, you can sit up and put the dumbbells on your knees and then put them onto the floor. The second way is you can sit up and then put them down at your sides. And the third way, which is ridiculous, you just drop it out of your hands and then they bounce all over the place. You can hurt somebody that way, but some people do that. I chose to sit up and put it down at my sides. And I felt a little pinch in my hand. I said, oh, that hurt a little bit. Well, man, that can't be too bad. And then I lifted my hand up, and I realized that I had dropped the dumbbell onto my finger, crushing it completely. And my finger is just bleeding down my hand. So I sprinted to the front of the gym, and I'm like, hey, I need you to call an ambulance. I'm bleeding. You got you to call them now. And as I'm standing there, I'm going back and forth. The music is still blaring in my ear. Oh, 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 Listen, I don't always listen to music in the gym, but when I do, it's going to be Beyonce. Forget about it. So he gets on the phone with the ambulance. I said, okay, I'm going outside because the pain is starting to set in. So I'm pacing back and forth. The pain is setting in, and I have two thoughts on my mind. One, am I going to lose my finger? And two... Am I still gonna get this chicken? Luckily for me, 
I got to the hospital. They were able to save my finger and my wife brought the chicken to the hospital. It wasn't that bad a day, actually. So after my surgery, my arm was in a cast, my entire arm. But because I built my self-discipline, my routines and my habits, where was I at the next day? Back in the gym. And since then, I've lost over 150 pounds. It's the small commitments and consistency that matters. Decide, commit, and stick with it. Some of the keys to stay on track when developing your self-discipline, the first thing is patience. We are currently in a society where we are completely obsessed with instant gratification. I pulled the chicken nuggets out of the refrigerator and it says, okay, I can put it in the microwave for five minutes or I can put it in the oven for 35 minutes. I'm going with the microwave. That's going to be done right then and now. And that's how we treat a lot of our goals. That's how we treat a lot of things in our lives. When it comes to self-discipline, we must exercise patience. Think of a plant. You may water this plant for days, weeks, maybe months, and not see anything. And you think to yourself, is this thing ever going to grow? And then one day, bang, out of nowhere, you start to see a sprout. You see, what you didn't see below the soil underneath was that ecosystem developing, the roots that were growing. And the same thing applies to your self-discipline. You may not see the fruit and results right away, but trust and believe that it is growing. That ecosystem in your mental muscle is growing. As long as you stay consistent, exercise patience on your journey through self-discipline. The second thing is to remove temptation. Now listen, I am a certified, licensed cookie monster. <laughs> Cookies are not safe in my presence. I tell my wife, listen, don't buy cookies, don't bring them home. In the grocery store, I don't go to the cookie aisle. In fact, listen, I'm all for women empowerment, but I stay away from Girl Scouts because they sell cookies, and that's not a good relationship for me. You must understand what your temptations are and remove them. If the discipline you're trying to work on is waking up early, but you love to hit that snooze button, how do you remove that temptation? Before you go to sleep, you take your alarm and put it across the room so that you have to physically get up in order to hit that snooze button. And by then, it's time to go. Remove temptation in order to help develop your self-discipline. Next, you want to halt. Halt stands for hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. These are the four emotional states where you are most weak and are prone to making poor decisions. I know I've made plenty of bad decisions when I was hungry. Oh man, that taco night is terrible. Or even when we're tired, we have to pay attention to these emotional states. If you're hungry, get something to eat. If you're angry, calm down, relax before making a decision. If you're lonely, call someone. And if you're tired, get some rest. Pay attention to your emotional states when you are growing on your journey through self-discipline. Lastly, Forgive yourself and move forward. We understand that anything you're trying to accomplish of note is not going to be easy. You're going to have failures. But what do we know about failure? Failure is not final. 
Failure is our teacher. We also know that we need to change habits and create good habits that are congruent with our goals. We also know we need to be patient and let our plants grow. We know we need to avoid temptation and halt. Will Smith once said, if you can't, <clears throat> how are you going to win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind? You can master the world the same way you mastered riding that bike. If you want to win, let me hear you say, yeah! yeah! Now go out there and crush your goals. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Ty, awesome. Now you know, I think about when I was growing up, I tried to play various sports, basketball, football, track, and I was terrible at all. And although many of the spectators will look down on me and or feel sorry for me, I never felt embarrassed or ashamed because among all the spectators, there was one spectator, my dad, who was always in the stands watching and sincerely happy to see that I was doing my best. You see, over and over and over again, dad taught me the concept that as long as you have done your best, then you have won. So despite the lack of sincere encouragement from team members and other spectators, I remain encouraged and inspired and motivated to get on the playing field and do my best. You see, dad instilled within me an unshakable courage to try. And that courage to try has helped me to go much further than I ever thought I could go. I was labeled a slow learner when I was in school, but yet I kept studying and became a professional. I was picked on by bullies, but I kept feeding my faith. And over time, those experiences started to build me up rather than to tear me down. I was considered to be ugly when I was a teenager because of all the acne I had. When I was a teenager, I had a severe case of acne, acne all over my face as well as my back. And I was considered to be ugly but I kept admiring my inner beauty. I kept appreciating my inner beauty. And over time, I began to realize that it really doesn't matter what other people call you. What really matters is what you call yourself. What other people think about you is not important. But what you think about yourself means everything. Because think about this. Think about this. Technically, technically, other people's words can never harm you. Technically, technically, other people's words can never harm you, but it's your own words that can kill you. Holler if you hear me. Other people's words can never harm you, but it's your own words that can kill you. So really, it's your own words, your own thoughts that you have to really guard and protect. It's your own words, your own thoughts that you have to really watch out for because other people's words, other people's thoughts can never harm you, but it's your own words, your own thoughts that can kill you. You know, there's an old African saying that goes, if there is no enemy on the inside, then the enemies on the outside cannot harm you. I love that. If there is no enemy on the inside, then the enemies on the outside cannot harm you. So therefore, as long as we maintain positive, healthy emotions on the inside, then the negativity that surrounds us cannot touch us. So I know that dad's legacy will always be in my heart. And wherever I go, wherever I am, I know that dad is always in the stands. And dad's legacy is very similar to a quote by Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt once said, it is not the critic who counts, 
nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbled or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of a high achievement, and who at the worst at least fails while daring greatly so that he shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. I love that quote because it's a reminder to me that my victory has already been won. I'm already successful. I became successful the moment that I decided to get into the arena and do my best. As Rocky Balboa said in the movie Rocky, I just want to go the distance. And if you remember in Rocky part one, Rocky did not win but he went the distance and he proved that real success is not about winning real success is about having the courage to try having the courage to step outside of your comfort zone having the courage to get on the playing field having the courage to try it's so important to not be afraid don't be afraid of failure never be afraid of failure because really failure is not the opposite of success failure is part of the pathway to success holler if you hear me failure is not the opposite of success failure is part of the pathway to success have you noticed people who avoid failure also avoid success because failure is part of the pathway to success I'm not afraid of